load locks and closing the doors and sealing it. It smelled really good in there. It smelled like laundry. Um, so anyways, it's a pretty light load. Um, it's like 1,500 pounds, 1,600 pounds, uh, which is really, really light for us. So I almost feel like I'm pulling an empty trailer. Um, but yeah, so this is that load that, uh, uh, well, <laughs> they offered us a load uh, the day before yesterday, like, or yesterday early, early morning. Um, and I, I said no, because we were not available until 4 a.m. this morning. And this was originally scheduled for yesterday morning, 8 a.m be live loaded um, and then it's due tonight at midnight and it's a solo load uh, that's why there's so much time on it because uh, as a solo driver even though this is 500 and about 510 miles of travel distance it was 56 miles from where we were to the, the pickup and then on a live load it generally you give about two hours to load it so a solo driver would not have had enough time in his 14 hour day to complete this. So he would have had to have stopped for a 10 hour rest period before he could complete this. But being that we're a team, um, we don't have to do that because at my end of my 10 hours, Alex jumps in and then he does his 10 hours. And by that time, I'm ready to go with my 10 hours. So we can continually roll as long as we have the hours weekly. And we just did our 34 hour reset, so we both had a fresh 70 hours. But, so uh, I, I denied the load. And the, with the, the thing saying that we were not available until the 6th after 4 a.m., uh, the planner sent back uh, a message and re-offered the load to us and said, it's a 24 hour facility. Um, and that we could still take the load when we were available. So then I'm looking at it, I'm like, but this is a live load. And with live loads, you always have to have an appointment at the shipper to, so that you can get a dock, right? So uh, I didn't deny it this time, but I did a, um, what's called a, um, oh dang it, it was in my mind until I wanted to think about it. Um, Anyhow, saying uh, I will take the load on the condition um, that they can set up a new appointment for a live load this morning. Well, then the, the shipper sent or the, the planner sent it back again, stating this is a 24 hour um, facility and that they will work us in. Okay, so I went ahead and accepted it because they were pretty adamant about it. So I accepted it and then kind of this morning going, We'll see what happens because there's times when we have gone to a shipper to be worked in and we had to sit for six hours waiting to be worked in. Um, so we got there, they took us right away, put us on a, on a dock, uh, pulled in. I expected, you know, uh, to be there for at least two hours because we didn't have an appointment, we were being worked in and, and the thing in the, the piece of paper said, uh, if you were late or didn't have an appointment, they would work you in first come first serve basis, and you know you don't know where you are in line, right? So um, I got up, made Alex and I a bologna sandwich, sat down, ate my sandwich, just about ready to start working on um, planning out my route with a fuel route and everything. And the guy, hey, you're done. I was like, damn, that was quick. So it was really nice to uh, not be there even an hour. Is good so then we pulled out um, put in our load straps in the back so that the, 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 the pallets don't slide in case we have to like stop quickly or whatever whatever causes shifting um, and then we closed it up sealed it up went and got the paperwork and headed out it was super easy so um, you know I wish more of those places were like that but I think number one it's it's a weekend, so it's a Saturday morning. Uh, number two, we were pretty early. As we were, as, um, we were going into the dock, um, about three or four other trucks came in, and as we were leaving, about two or three more trucks were ready to pull into the, to the site. So I think I just got there at a really good time, because uh, had I have gotten there a little bit later, we might have been waiting. So I don't know, we'll call that good luck um, for getting up early and getting out there. Um, anyhow, so when we get there, um, we will drop this load off and then we will be going and picking up a load for Cabela's and heading, I believe that one is going to Oklahoma 
converting it down to Oklahoma City. So, which is okay because that's along our normal route that we normally run back and forth in. So, um, just the funny thing is, like, these are single or solo loads. So, number one, we're going to be there super quick. And the thing keeps saying, cannot deliver early. Well, as a team, we're going to get there early. And then if we're there before the appointment, we have to sit and wait. And that's not cool. Um, so, uh, I, I'm going to see if I can't get a hold of a planner, a uh, team planner. See if they can't plan us out some um, some team rides after that because uh, it's just it's it's not good use of a resource to be putting solo loads on team. Um, usually a solo load is between 350 to 700 miles. Um, that's going to take one to two days for a solo driver to do for a team. Uh, if I'm on the road driving straight through, I can throw in 530, 550 miles in my 10 hours. Um, and then Alex has a 10 hours. And if you're only jumping yeah, for two hours, and then we're sitting and waiting because we're there early, then that's a waste of the resource that we could really be moving freight that, has, that needs to be expedited with a longer um, path than what we're doing. So... It's okay. Uh, the thing that's important for me is that I'm continuing to roll. Uh, because of all the downtime we had um, for Ben um, going and getting the truck fixed, we were down for for three days. Um, with, with all that stuff going on, we only ended up with one load completing last week. So our paycheck for last week was terrible. It was, we each got $300. That's that's terrible. When I'm used to anywhere between like $900 and $1,500 in a week each. So that's like, ugh. Um, so anyhow, I, I'm going to be on top of these planners. <clears throat> Y'all are going to keep me moving because I can't afford to be sitting aside. That's that's getting out of my, my uh, messing up my, my road map for my financial goals. So... Not to mention, I have uh, Disney and Universal Studios I'm doing next month. I need my money. Anyways, uh, I don't know why this truck is going so slow. Let me go around this truck. Um, so anyways, uh, so that's kind of what's going on with us right now. Uh, not sure um, what we will get from Oklahoma City, but uh, I will be on top of those planners to... Uh, get us planned out and get us some, uh, some good runs and we're gonna just keep keep moving uh, until we get to uh, next month when we uh, will move down to Florida for our I think um, I think on that day um, I'm going to do um, I'm gonna go for four days instead of three uh, we'll see we'll see uh, we'll see how this works out with uh, the money situation because when at the end of the day if I ain't making that money I ain't gonna take no time off so um, But if we could just keep moving these these this freight and it's, the first quarter is over so freight starting to pick up um, Obviously since we're there throwing all these solo loads on us frantically uh, They're just trying to reach out to anybody that's available um, it doesn't matter if it's a solo load or if it's a team load. I still get paid the same amount per mile. The only difference is on a solo load, I sometimes end up sitting more because the delivery, we can make it to the delivery sooner than what it was scheduled for. Um, and that's a problem. And if that's the case, I'm going to start T-calling these freaking loads and let some bales finish them out because I'm not going to be sitting and waiting. Um, this is taking money out my mouth. And I'm money motivated. As anybody that really knows me understands that. Uh, especially when I got a goal, get out my way. Um, anyways, so uh, it seems like a, one thing that uh, I've noticed recently, um, and I think that with the pandemic and the social distancing and kind of more isolation, I'm really noticing um, a trend. 
and I think it's a good trend. I think it's a positive trend. But like, not only my family, but some friends that I'm talking to, things that I'm seeing on Facebook, a lot of people are doing self-searching. Um, a lot of people are doing self-work. Um, a lot of people are looking and realizing, you know what, I'm not happy with what I'm doing, and they want to change what they're doing. And I think that's great. I think it's really good. Uh, I kind of went through that with my divorce, um, and then my four years of of wallowing in my poo uh, and gaining all that weight and uh, being self-destructive, uh, I decided when Alex came around that I, I didn't want to die. Uh, I wanted to live and I wanted to make my life better. I wanted to take the experiences that I had in life and I wanted to learn from those to make my life better. And I think that's absolutely wonderful. I think that when you can become self-aware, that you're ready to make changes, right? Um, I think that sometimes we can be self-aware and want to make changes, but we still want to drag our feet and, and pull against, because changes are hard, y'all. It's hard to make changes. Um, it's scary to make changes. It's scary when there's a road that you haven't traveled and there's not a lot of light, right? Um, we want to put our brights on and we want to be able to, to see where we're going. Um, but change sometimes doesn't do that. You can't see those blind corners. Um, and so I think that sometimes people want to put, dig their heels in and resist that even though they are self-aware. And then there's those that are like, I'm self-aware, I'm jumping on my bike and I'm going down the hill full speed uh, and I'll deal with what happens when it gets there. Okay, but the important thing is on both of those, you're moving forward. You may be moving forward a little bit slower or you may be forward faster. It's up to you and how you're gonna handle that. Be prepared for those obstacles though. Uh, that's one thing that I really had to think about is Man, I was kind of forced into a decision to change my career. Nine years I worked in telecommunications with the cable company. And I probably still would have been there had that been open. And I still would have been in the same place. Uh, I might have moved to a different place because that place was falling apart. It was a hell hole. Uh, but I still probably would have been in the same area. Probably same job. Not having any growth. Not getting out stretch marks. So there's a couple things that happened. Number one, I met the love of my life. Um, number two, uh, my job ended um, because it was sold and they closed their office. And, and it made me for the first time in my life go on blind faith. So to get that job at Progressive, it was really throw out my resumes. And I went to several states. Uh, I had a job interview in Georgia that I never ended up taking uh, with with um, a cable company out there that started in Gulf Breeze, Florida, but then they said that their office in, in, in Alabama, was it, uh, or Georgia, one of those two, uh, it was in Georgia, uh, was actually had the opening that they wanted me to come and interview for that they were pretty sure that I was going to get. They were very impressed with my credentials. And, with what I'd done and needed somebody with my experience to take over with in the office. Um, and then I did go up to um, Des Moines and, and interviewed with um, Com not Comcast, um, what is the phone company? Anyways, whatever, uh, it was a, a, a phone company. And then uh, I did my phone interview with Progressive. Ended up taking Progressive. Well, Comcast, I didn't end up getting offered that position. Uh, and the reason why is because it was a, um, a union office. And because I didn't have um, union experience, they were looking for somebody to come in and handle the, uh, the position 
that could handle the union experience that needed to know the ins and the outs of the union and, and how that worked. Okay, uh, I get it. Which you know, I'm glad now, after the fact, uh, because uh, then I ended up doing my interview with Progressive, uh, being offered the position of Progressive, and moving to Phoenix, which it was great. Um, it allowed me to get out of the, the hole that I was in, in St. Joe. Uh, it allowed me some personal growth, getting into a completely different career. Uh, it was nothing to do with technology. It was insurance, which I'd never done. Getting there, having to trust my ability to go in, learn a new profession, not only learn it, but having to be licensed in it. And uh, any of uh, who knows about insurance, that uh, that PNC license ain't no joke, right? Uh, it, it's not easy. They word that crap to confuse you on purpose. Um, so went in, took that, was very successful in passing that. Um, worked with Progressive for four years. Um, because of that, it afforded Alex and I the ability to get him his, um, his permanent residence. Uh, he was able to uh, get employment. Uh, he worked in the airport for several years before we decided that, okay, he can try the truck driving thing, even though I was scared to death of it. I was like, I don't want you. The first time I told him no, actually, uh, which I'm glad I did because that wasn't through Swift. That was actually was just a driving school that he would have had to go and pay the six grand for the driving school and then uh, find employment. Um, and at first one, I told him no. And in fact, I think it was 10 grand for that one. Um, and then, um, again, he, he found Swift and he really wanted to do it. And he told me, I want to do this. I've always, since I was a kid, always wanted to drive a big truck. And I was like, okay, make you a deal. You get to the school, you pass it, then you can do it, right? So he did. And not only did he do it, he still worked at the airport during the day while taking the night classes at night. So, which uh, was his choice because uh, the day classes, the one that I did was three weeks long. The night classes, because it's reduced time, was six weeks long. But he wanted the six week class because he felt like he would get more experience with the language barrier for him. He really wanted to understand. So, uh, he did that. He went in, he got his permit, went into the academy, learned how to operate this truck, um, went, got his CDL, went off with a mentor, um, and came out and did his thing. And I was super impressed. And I, even though I was kind of scared, I was super impressed. I was like, okay, well, this will work out, right? Uh, I'll continue to work at Progressive, and he'll do this, and I'll see him every three weeks. In the beginning, it wasn't too bad, right? But then, when it was like, um, every three weeks, uh, maybe four weeks, and then it started getting to five weeks, and and I was just like, uh, I can't, I can't deal with without with him being gone this long. Um, and then I had some obstacles happen up in Progressive that kind of made me lose a little bit of job satisfaction, um, dealing with some folks that um, you, you probably saw, for anybody that knows me, those that don't, just remember salt and sugar look the same, so be careful where you where you put in your tea, okay? Um, so, you know, you think you really know some people and that they're you're pretty close with them, and you have to be really careful um, with what you do, and especially when it work. And it's my bad, because I know better. I know better. I was in management for a long time. I know better. Uh, but you get laxed and you get comfortable with people, especially when you interact with them outside of the workplace where you're like, oh, we are friends. Um, and then when they want to step on you to make an advancement and push you down, you find out that all along they weren't really friends. Uh, they were waiting for an opportunity to stand on your, your back to get that lift. Um, 
So, hey, whatevs, whatevs. Um, and then also some people were a little cuckoo in the Cocoa Puffs. Um, they got a little bit of bad reefer or something, I don't know. But, regardless, um, it, it kind of put a stain on my work history there. That's one that would have eventually went away, but it gave me an opportunity for growth and reaching out again, right? I would have overcame it. I'm that guy that I will sit in a job until the job goes away. I, and it kind of showed in St. Joe sitting in it. Uh, it started out with cable vision, and then it went to uh, suddenly, and then it went to Altice where it finally disappeared. But nine years sitting in there, uh, I wouldn't go nowhere um, unless it was some kind of an advancement, but I was pretty happy with what I was doing. Uh, I can get really complacent, uh, really comfortable with uh, just sitting in the same place. Um, I, I feel more com comfort with um, the same thing in and out, right? Uh, instead of a lot of change. I've never been one fond of a lot of change, but so this gave me the opportunity to reach out again and look at a different industry. Um, Alex was doing good. I never in my life, I was that guy that my, I went from a car to a blazer um, and that blazer was too big for me to drive, right? Um, Alex, or not Alex, I'm sorry, David, who I was with several years before, before Jen, um, I got a little car and he got a truck. There's no hell, hell no, there was no way I was going to drive that big ass truck. It was too big for me to drive. And now look at me. Uh, I'm pulling a, a 64 foot, or driving a 64 foot vehicle, uh, 10 feet wide, 53 feet of that is a trailer, 18 wheels. Uh, who would have known? Uh, so uh, I took that opportunity, spread my wings. I said, okay, look, we're in this pandemic. Um, Dad got sick where we thought it was COVID. It ended up being pneumonia. Um, things happened that afforded me the ability to check this out and I took the opportunity when I could um, I got my permit and that was gonna be the test and if I can get this permit and this time I have allowed that I'm out of work on this uh, on this personal leave um, then I will go for it um, if I don't get my permit then it means it's not time for me I need to stay where I'm at because uh, there's no way in hell I was going to leave a job without having something to replace it uh, especially since you know my job was the, the main breadwinner uh, got that there's three tests you take for that CBL um, out of all three tests I only missed one question and I was like let's just do it so um, put in my immediate notice because I was out on personal leave that I wasn't going to return. Um, the old boss said, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Um, this affords me that if I need to get up to my, to my mom and dad, I just let them know. They brought me right up there to Boise. Um, it allows me to be with my husband. Uh, God, this road is really bumpy. Kentucky is terrible roads. Um, anyhow, and here's where we are. Woo! These roads are bad, y'all. So anyways, um, that's a little bit about the, the personal change and kind of my growth. And so a lot of people right now are doing these soul searchings and they're doing this growth and they're learning things about themselves that they haven't learned because they were suppressing things or pushing things down. Uh, but a, this isolation has kind of given people, I don't know if it's the courage, I mean it is take courage to do it, 
but um, you can only look at the four walls so long before you need to start thinking about things. Uh, I think that there's a lot of stuff that's changing and it's allowing people to really do some soul searching and I'm really glad to see the growth. Um, I'm really happy to see growth my family's going through, my friends are going through. Um, I'm seeing a lot of my friends um, ready to pop babies out. Um, you know, again, another COVID um, byproduct. Uh, spending all this time together, we're gonna have a new baby boom. So anyways, um, just a lot of cool things happening right now. Um, I know I've been babbling. This is probably a, one of the longer videos, but I just wanted to uh, just wanted to, to kind of throw some of that out there. Um, if anybody ever needs to talk, bounce things off somebody, just talk through things, just someone to listen, uh, I'm here for you. Uh, remember, 10 hours a day, I'm just driving. And the other 10 hours that I'm, I'm sleeping, that I'm back up for 10 hours. So I have a lot of time to talk on the phone. So if you need somebody, you let me know. Uh, I'll be there. Um, I'm a good person to listen to, or to listen to you. Uh, if you ask me what I think, just understand that I'm not gonna hold back because I don't feel that holding back is always what people need. I mean, so there's certain things. If you if you already got it worked out, then I'm, I don't need to throw nothing in the mix. If you truly are wanting some opinions or suggestions, then I'll give them to you. I don't expect you to take them. Um, you take the information and you use it or you reshape it or you apply it however best suits you. Um, but just know that uh, non-judgmental, um, if you need it, I'm here for you. So, hey, I see the hearts. Ah. Virginia, you're such a sweetheart. Uh, tell Jazzy I said happy birthday. I know it's a couple days late, but you know, tell her happy birthday. Ah. All right, y'all. Well. I'm gonna get off of here. I have about 10 miles before I start doing some, some working through this city that we're coming up on. So I'm gonna jump off here. Just wanted to give you an update this morning. Uh, talk a little bit about self growth and uh, tell you that I love you. Um, please, please, please. Uh, there, another thing, we have a lot of these states that are lifting these mandates early. Please just use your common sense. If you're indoors, mask up. You know, washing your hands is always good. You know, even before the, pan the pandemic, you should always wash your hands often. Uh, social distance. You know, let's let's continue to be smart and get through this. So, all right, everybody. Love you. Take care. I'll see you tomorrow.